In this video, we're going to have a look at the power rule for differentiation. Specifically, in this example, you're asked to find the derivative f prime of x for each of the following functions. So in part a, x to the 5 minus 3x squared plus 1. In part b, root x minus 7x to the 1 third minus x. And in part c, 1 over x to the 6 minus 1 over x. Before we go ahead and do this together, try the problem out on your own. As a hint, remember that the power rule for differentiation says that the derivative of x to the n equals nx to the n minus 1, as shown here in red. So again, what it's telling you is to find the derivative of a power function, you simply bring the power down out in front and reduce the power by 1. So part a is just a standard polynomial function, so the rule should be easy to apply. For part b, remember that when you're dealing with root x, root x can be written as x to the 1 half, so that'll help you apply the power rule. And in part c, remember that when you've got something in the denominator, you can write it as a negative exponent. So for instance, 1 over x to the 6 can be written as x to the minus 6, and then you can go ahead and apply power rule. So go ahead, try this out, click pause, and then click play when you're ready to continue. So let's go ahead and have a look at the solutions. First of all, for part a, we've got f of x equals x to the 5 minus 3x squared plus 1. So what that means is that the derivative is going to be, let's just go ahead and differentiate term by term. For x to the 5, we're going to bring the 5 down and we're going to reduce the power by 1. So we get 5x to the 4. For the next term, we have minus 3x squared. So the 2 is going to come down and multiply the negative 3, so we'll end up with negative 6, and we're going to reduce the power by 1. So we had x squared, we'll end up with just x. And lastly, when you differentiate 1, you get 0, and the reason is, because of power rule, you can think of 1 as 1x to the 0. And so when you differentiate, the power comes down and you end up with a 0 multiplying the 1. The other way of thinking of it, outside of power rule, is just to think back about your concept of derivatives and what it represents. It's just a tangent line of your function. So if your function is y equals 1, the horizontal line, well, it's going to have a horizontal tangent, so the slope is going to be 0. So now we're done part A. Let's go on to part B. First of all, let's rewrite our function in a way where power rule is easier to apply. So we'll write root x as x to the 1 half, and then the rest of the function stays the same. So what that means is if we go ahead and find the derivative, the power comes down, and we reduce the power by 1. So our previous power was 1 half, 1 half minus 1 is going to give us negative 1 half. Next, coming to the second term, again the power comes down and multiplies the term that was previously there. We had a negative 7 and it's going to get multiplied by 1 third. So what that means is we're going to end up with negative 7 over 3. And now as for the new power, we had 1 third and we're going to subtract 1. If you take 1 third and subtract 1 from it, you get negative 2 thirds. And lastly, moving on to the final term, minus x, the derivative of that is going to be minus 1. Again, you can think of that from the power rule perspective as we just had x to the 1, so the power comes down, and the power then gets reduced by 1. So we end up with minus 1 x to the 0, and x to the 0 is just 1. Now, looking at part c, again, let's begin by writing our function in a form where power rule is going to be easier to apply. So rather than writing things in denominators, we'll write them as negative powers. So 1 over x to the 6 is the same as x to the negative 6, and 1 over x is the same as x to the negative 1. So now, if we apply power rule, what we have is, again, the power comes down, so we get negative 6, x... Well, what's the new power here? Remember, we subtract 1 from the power. So we had negative 6, and now we subtract 1. So minus 6 minus 1 means we have minus 7. Going on to the next term, remember the negative 1 is going to come down, and there's already a negative out in front. So the two negatives are going to make a positive. As for the power, 
remember it gets reduced by 1. So we had minus 1 and we subtract another 1 from it. So we end up with minus 2. So now we've completed the question. So just to recap a couple of quick things, power rule just says you bring the power down and reduce the power by 1. Remember that for questions involving roots, roots can be rewritten as fractional powers. And for questions involving an x in the denominator, remember that can be rewritten as a negative power. So for instance, 1 over x squared can be rewritten as x to the negative 2. Doing this makes power rule applicable, and then you can continue on with the question.